uh, here in St. Louis for the 2013 USA Cross Country Championships with uh, Lee Summit native uh, Matt Tegenkamp, a uh, two-time Olympian. And um, before we talk about this weekend, take, take me back to the, um, I think it was your maybe second year post Legion in, in 08 maybe, the, going to the trials and then making that you know, second place in the 5K and tell me what that emotion was like and taking a victory lap and getting uh, getting to, to celebrate and talk about that with both your, your high school and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and collegiate and, uh, and post-collegiate coach there, you know, on that victory lap. Around. I know we got some neat shots of that. Tell me what that feeling and what those, you know, discussions were like. <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, that was actually would have been my fourth summer. Was it already fourth? Already, okay, uh, that's right. Coming out. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, that was something... 04 wasn't a realistic possibility for me. Sure. Uh, coming, just not consistent training, dealing with injuries, yeah. ups and downs, and still being a collegiate athlete. Um, and so that was kind of the Olympics is, our, you know, without a doubt, the pinnacle of our sport. Um, that's what people pay attention to. That's what sure. defines you as a runner. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I still look back on that race and it wouldn't. I got tripped up. There was four, five guys fighting for three spots right. with 200 meters to go, and I got tripped up um, right after that 200 meter mark, so at the start of the turn, and that really took away the way I was just feeling terrible. And that race it was kind of one of those races that, like, uh, you you know, you go into the Olympic trials trying to secure your spot for this, you know, goal that you've had your entire running career, sure. and just the whole race just never really felt like anything kind of clicked yeah. and uh, at that point getting tripped up it really just took my mind away from everything other than like just get to the finish line yeah um, and it really 08 wasn't making the team and making the Olympics it really uh, for the goal that had been there it wasn't quite uh, the excitement and joy that I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, I really didn't truly feel like I kind of earned my spot on there. I think I kind of got a little bit lucky. Um, and I think that was a little bit of my drive actually leading into 2012. Um, and that was, um, you know, I was very confident going into that race and what I had done yeah. and worked very hard um, on what um, trying to execute my plan and you know I just sat back was patient and when the move was made I was able to cover the first one at least um, and it never at any point with six laps to go it was I mean that entire way around I just knew like just keep doing what you're doing and you've made this team. and it really just got to soak in for a period of time before the actual finish but right um, you know Jerry and I, my coach Jerry Schumacher, we've been through thick and thin together, and um, both of us have learned equally along the way um, of what it really truly means to be a professional. And it's been a great ride, and um, he's been a great mentor. So, clinching that spot in 08 wasn't wasn't quite the thrill, but because you expected it, is that what kind of? Yeah, no, it was. Uh, Chris Zielinski being a right. training partner, a college yeah. teammate for a number of years. Um, Didn't go you know, the way you wanted it. We kind of had a we had a plan going into it. Um, I, from the very start of the race, uh, had a side stitch that just never went away. Right. Like, only thing I was telling myself the entire way was just latch on to any move that was made and just hang sure. on for dear life and hopefully like. I could make the best of the situation. Yeah. Um, Chris definitely did his part. Um, I never was able to hold up my end. Um, and like I said, the only thing that got me to that spot was getting tripped up right. and just that rush of adrenaline that came along with that. And I didn't realize that was so close till several hours after the race or maybe the next day when one of the volunteers said, yeah, look, here's the cell phone video. And she was right there at the curb. And Oh my god! I almost freaked out. Like, oh my gosh! Yeah. You know? Well, my parents and family were probably a little. <laughs> I'm pretty yeah. sure their hearts stopped a little bit. So. Yeah. 
But what was that like having that big crowd family um, there to support you and see you and even coach? Yeah, well, I, you know, the last two Olympic trials uh, have been in Eugene. Um, it's one of the few places in the U.S. that, you know, it's tough to travel to. Yeah. Uh, but at, from an athlete's perspective, it's the only place that I would want to run. Right. The fan base knows what our sport's all about. Yeah. Uh, they really get into it. Uh, they've got, you know, at the Olympic trials on any given day, you got 16 to 18,000 people right. making the stadium erupt and just go crazy. And, um, so with family there, it was a little bit hard to, you know, single them out. I think the only person that I was actually able to pick out was my high school coach, Dave Denny. Yeah. Um, and that's just, that's the one, him and Jerry are the voices that right. no matter what you can pick out. And, um, it was, but still knowing that they were there and after the whole event and everything, yeah. um, it was just really special that they were you know, able to travel and be a part of that. Yeah. So you go to Beijing in 08, and have a great race when you're you win your prelims, and then in the final um, aren't able to quite hold on to the pace. What what did you take away from that experience? Just briefly, what what was that like? Well, I was probably well, I was in the best Olympic 5000 final in history. Right. Um, Bikili set a world well, an Olympic record. Um, and to do that, he ran 3:57 for oh, his wow. last final yeah. mile. So, uh, you know, it was a lot of people just got absolutely destroyed and obliterated in that race. And yeah. um, at those levels, you don't really have a choice but to put yourself in it and try to hang on as long as possible. And yeah. um, you hope that you absolutely are on on point sure. going into those. And um, that's an extremely hard objective and goal to have. Yeah. Uh, and I figured it out one, well, twice. I'd say Osaka and Berlin. Yeah. Both. Um, you know, I was there, coming down the last 200 meters in the fight, and um, that's what's really fun. Yeah. Ten thousand. I'm still trying to work out. Yeah. How to make that happen? What what what's just brief? What's the biggest memory that you have of 07? You know, coming down and missing Olymp World Championship <laughs> medals by. By split. I still, like, I could have gone another 100 meters at that. Like, yeah. I just really, I got gapped pretty significantly with 300 to go. Um, and really didn't start making up any ground until probably 80 to go. Right. Um, and I just don't think I realized, I just, well, I just realized way too late that everybody was coming back to me. Yeah. Um, and when we looked back at the, the splits, the only one that had a faster last 200 was Bernard by point two. Oh my. So, yeah. um, you know, it was just one of those things like I was on my game and, you know, I put myself in the best possible position. You know, I ran what I could on that day and yeah. um, it still stings, but yeah, um, yeah well, I, I think... I think I woke up all the neighbors in the surrounding houses and I was <laughs> yeah. yelling I got, know, I got 30 a, in the morning yeah. here in Missouri, go, go! Yeah. I got a lot of that from yeah. uh, friends and family, but um, you know, I hope what it really did uh, was just the next group that was coming out, who we're seeing now, right. you know, Galen starting it, Chris Selensky starting it, um, and then this younger group, German and Chris Derrick, Luke Piscedra, um, Elliot Heath, like that core, like they can get there yeah um and you americans know, can yeah, medal at, at the certainly world, it's not going to be level. easy and it's definitely going to take the special right perfect race sure but it can't happen yeah well yeah forgive me if i if, if, if the question came off that it was fell off the pace in the 08 08 final but yeah i mean no. that was i have not to be meant to be no so not at all no. it was but, uh, uh, but then tell me what what did you what was that experience like? What did you take away from being an Olympian, and being at the Olympics? Did you, you know, what was the coolest part about, you know, the whole thing, in a way? Uh, no, like honestly, um, the best part about being in the Olympics is uh, it actually happens kind of on at least for me, happens on the bus ride actually to uh, the final. Um, okay. You know, I've always gone into those major championships that. It means nothing just to make the team. Like sure, you you're better that. be right. in your final and putting yourself in the best position possible yeah. to go after a medal. 
Yeah. Um, and so on the bus ride over to the to the final, uh, it's really reflecting back on who's been a part of your journey, who's helped you get there, and I've got a great support group around me, friends and family. Sure. Um, I've had multiple high school teammates, college teammates, you know, literally travel all over the world to be at other events, and um, you don't get to this level without that support right. group around. And um, they were, you know, I had, I think, six or seven family members in Beijing, and I had 10 in uh, London. And it was, you know, I knew where they were sitting. I was able to kind of make eye contact with them before the right. race started. And um, in 08, my 70 year old grandpa traveled all the way over. He got to see, you know, the Great Wall and Tiananmen Square. And, right. Um, London, my family, like, I barely ever saw them because they were just out sightseeing all the time. Sure. It's just really neat to be able for them to to see the excitement and the enjoyment that they get out of, you know, being attached to just the sport that I do. Right, right, yeah, without your accomplishments, they wouldn't have experienced all those things. Um, and then and then a year later in 09, when, when you go sub 13, what, what's the, tell me about what that experience was like and what you remember from that. Yeah, the, um, it's actually, you know, post-race, you know, I've been, I'd have been on that verge, I'd run 1304 to 1307, um, you know, for a while, four to six times somewhere in that sure. ballpark, um, and I knew it was just going to take that one, you know, race that just clicked the whole way through, and, um, you know, I was based off of the way uh, world championships fell, there wasn't a chance to run Zurich. Sure. which was when Dathan ran the 1256, set the American record. Um, Ten days later was Brussels, and I had every intention of going after that record. Right. Um, and so there was definitely um, more of a drive to show that, you know, I was right there as well, could get it done. Um, but uh, it was like any other 5K. From 2K out, you're second guessing everything. Uh, not sure if you're going to be able to maintain the pace, hold on to it. Um, but um, post race, breaking 13, um, every single runner that was in that race, and especially the African runners, really truly knew what it meant getting underneath that 13 minute barrier. Right. And they all came up, said congratulations, shook my hand, right. um, and it was really kind of you know what the four I think what the four minute mile barrier was sure. once upon a time. And um, but to the layman person, it's hard to put 5K in perspective. Right. And I think it was just really neat to see the respect that you know the best two best countries in the world for distance running have for that event, right. and what that time really signifies to them. And um, that's something that. Not too many people got to see, yeah. uh, but it was really, really cool. Yeah, man. I yeah, I'm just <coughs> getting chills just just hearing hearing about that. Um, and then I know O10, you suffered from injuries and you run you know the world championships, run the 1500. And thought you were gonna maybe pull off a title there and <laughs> yeah, the USA's in the 1500, but um, and then 2011, you you know. Run your first 10K on the track. Tell me um, what that process was like, and and then when decisions that, that this was going to be your your distance on the track. Yeah, you know, I think I am 31 now. Um, my prime was that 26 to 28, maybe slightly into 29. But sure. um, there's a natural bell curve, and I'm definitely on. The down, either at the plateau or starting the down slope of that, sure. um, and I, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, it just changes kind of what I am more suited for. Yeah. Um, the 5K has everything to do with strength, but you better still be able to run 333, 334 for 1500, which right. you're looking at a 350, 352 mile somewhere in there. Um, in your best, you've gone 330... 334. Okay. Um, and now I don't have that... I could click off um, some 56s in practice, but it's really hard for me now to string that stuff together. Sure. 
the race pace for a five, it's, you know, I can do it for a while, but it's really tough to hang on to it at the end. And yeah. uh, the 10K is just the event that I'm suited for. I'm uh, kind of... Uh, call it old man strength, um, <laughs> but it got a ton of years of training underneath me. Um, I'm very uh, competitive when it comes to the really hard parts of the race. I can grind it out, but it's that aerobic side of things. Uh, now that I, my anaerobic ability is a very short spurt, but my aerobic capacity can go for a, an extremely long time. And um, It's an exciting new chapter. I think that's what's really fun about being a distance runner in this sport is... Right. If you're lucky enough to start out at that, uh, you know, 1500, 3K, 5K racing distance and you can maximize your career out of that, right. you can move up into the uh, 10,000 half marathon and eventually the marathon and um, that's kind of the direction that I'm on right now and it's provided uh, a fun new challenge right. to the sport. What was, where did the idea of the, uh, the YouTube video, video of you have of you on the on the chalkboard, oh, yeah. Tegan Camp doesn't run 10k. Yeah, Tegan Camp. Runs. I think that was just a little uh, fun with the uh, the Let's Run Metz's board. Sure. Um, you know that was something that yeah. um, I always knew down the road sure. I'd be in the 10. Um, a lot of people early on in my career wanted me running one. Um, pretty much right after I ran 13:04. People started, which was in 2006, telling me that I should attempt a 10 and yeah. see what I could do. And while there was nothing wrong with that idea, um, it was just not the plan that Jerry wanted to stick with. Sure. And we really wanted to kind of dial in what was important, what we thought was important to run the best 5K possible as many times as possible. Right. And, um, you know, that's, I think, what we got out of my career, and now it's time to try to figure out the same, th same philosophy for the 10,000. Right. Um, and that's much harder because you need much more time to recover in between each of those really hard 10,000s. And, so. and just, I can't, I don't understand what the scheduling was about it. At the 2011 USA is when you got the 10K and the night after the 5K. Yeah. Um, yeah. That seems silly, but... Um, do you enjoy it? Is it? I mean, obviously, it's much more mentally tough. Do you like that mental challenge? Do you like having to, you know, move up to twenty-five laps and keep your head in the game? And yeah, you know, like when uh, I think the the style of training that we have at the core of everything we do is a marathon-based um, fundamentals, and so really increasing that aerobic capacity which means extremely long intervals and you're looking in it for any given workout you're looking anywhere between 10 to 14 miles worth of intervals or you know a hard long tempo run of 20 to 22 sure um and so the distance itself or the number of laps like that doesn't really phase me at all yeah. um and i think the 10 the way i've prepared early on in my career um, the 10 is actually, for the most part, a very comfortable race. Yeah. Um, and the 5, you reach lactic from so far out. I mean, you got a mile to run with all that stuff Bad built up that. in your legs. Yeah. And the 10, I think it's the same way, but it doesn't hit you quite as hard. Um, and really, I think it just takes a lot of effort to kind of get yourself out of, you know, you've been running 22 laps at... Um, 64s and yeah. you just got to remember remind that body like okay it's time to go like drop it down to you know 60s or 59s like whatever you can manage and yeah. um, I still think I got a really solid that's kind of the last major thing on the track um, that I, like I still think I've got one really really hard good 10k yeah. that can be a PR effort and um, I would love to try to get down into that 27 10 range before I'm off the track your 11, 2011 world champs at the, at the London um, in 2012, did you, what were your thoughts going away with those in those, what, 18th to 20 something place? Were you, were you happy with your effort? Did you come away just disappointed? Like, not, I mean, what were those experiences like and what did you come away with? Yeah. Um, I think the, what Jerry and I are still trying to, learn he definitely always errs on the side of caution sure. uh, and recovery 
and I, as an athlete, when it's summer, like I want to race, go for it. like yeah. put me on the track as much as possible, and let's go after it. And I think in the five, the three, you know, anywhere between fifteen hundred to five k, like you can do that much more. Yeah. The ten, while it doesn't really feel like it beats you up so much, you know, a day or two after the race, it the effects of that really do linger for quite a while. Right. Um, I don't think I ever gave that you know, really paid attention to it yeah. and would try to rush back and get in that next race. And I don't think I've set myself up great yet for leading into a world championships. Mm -hmm. And that's my hope this year is, yeah. um, you know, I want to, my summer, I don't think on the track will be that impressive. Sure. Um, you know, my focus on the track is really going to be uh, the 10,000 at Stanford, 10,000 at the trials. And, um, I hope what I hope is my sixth consecutive team representing the U.S. in Moscow. Yeah, what's that? What's that like? I'm sure you gotta take pride because, I mean, to make six straight U.S. teams, that's I mean, that, that doesn't happen a lot for distance runners. You know, well, at any event, really. Yeah. No, it's uh, my career. Uh, I am extremely happy where things are at yeah. right now. Um, and I just, especially with the way, the you know, where the level of American distance running has got across right. the board and every distance. And um, I think with the younger collegiates that just graduated that are now in the professional ranks, um, they've really solidified that depth at every event. And so, you know, the 10,000, while it was great for the top three, um, now you're looking at six deep, eight deep, yeah. um, and it's it's going to be a, this coming year will probably be my biggest challenge to try to make that team. But it's really neat that you know me, Dathan, Ryan Hall, Alan Webb, um, you know the early early graduating classes of 2000 kind of uh, you know it all started with Kennedy, obviously, um, but. Uh, then you know Goucher followed, and um, uh, Todd Williams, and it's just fun to see. Like, you know, there's one guy, then there's two or three guys, and right. then there's you know six or seven, and now it's you know you can rattle off years, yeah, yeah twenty okay. guys or something like that that would be very capable. And, and it's I mean, and you look at the, I mean, they really need to expand the field size of USA. There's guys getting left out. Yeah. Left out, left and right. Well, I think that, just you know yeah. studs. I think that's what I think is kind of um, drawing up the competitiveness and raising the bar is you know making those stand like you know capping the field at twenty four and if you want to be in that field yeah. like you better run the time and yeah. um, that's it's just really fun to be a part of that whole movement movement um, it's you know. I hope that it doesn't come back to bite me come sure. U.S. championships. <laughs> well, yeah, surely, well, I mean, surely the, those younger guys will have so much respect for you and what you've done in your career. Surely, if you ask nicely, don't you think they'd let you? You know, I train with go by I, you. I train with too many of them now, so no. They won't let you go by and make sure you get second or third or anything no. like that. No. So, and I would not expect them to. That's not the way that I would want sure. to make a team. Um, no, like I said, right now. Um, I'm extremely happy with what I've accomplished. I will put out my very best effort. If that doesn't happen, I'll be very disappointed um, that I'm not on that team. Yeah. But uh, it would it would cap a great track career. Yeah, for sure. Well, is it safe to say? And it sounds like that you're ex extremely happy with your career. And I mean, anybody who was a, a runner in America would love to accomplish what you've accomplished. And, um, but safe to say that there's a few things that you're like, oh man, it was just so close. But, but things that you loved would have just been so close. But you can't really, you're happy with where you're at, and you're, you can't really look back or do anything about those. And yeah, I mean, my obviously, the point oh three away from a bronze is a big one. Um, and really, on the only other thing that uh, kills me is my three kpr. Mm -hmm. I definitely, I know like translating time, like that's not what I'm paying attention to, but sure. the year I ran 807 in the two mile, 
that same year, like I really thought that I could be down in that 731 yeah. to 732 range. Um, right. And then if, when you're at that point, you never know right. what could happen, how they go. And um, that one, and then the 10,000. If I can get the 10,000 down, I'll be, you know, I wish the only thing I would have, wish I could have done more was just run a faster three. So yeah, yeah. Those days are long gone. <laughs> <laughs> Way too old, right? For that stuff. But, um, and tell me what life is like now. You know, obviously been married for a while and being a father and how that's changed you yeah. and your, your life at all. Yeah, we're, uh, my wife Michelle, uh, we now have uh, two awesome boys. Uh, one's two and a half and one is five months. And uh, we're just having... A blast, especially when I'm actually around in Portland. Um, you know, my wife, uh, she definitely does uh, just a great job, really, um, you know, carrying the burden uh, and the household while I'm away. And, yeah. um, and never showing that, you know, there's really an effect. Sure. Uh, and that just makes, you know, the sport is really really tough uh we got great you know financial backing and a really secure uh program uh but it still requires as a having a young family still requires being away uh yeah. traveling to training camps and altitude and you know the summer racing season and all that so um like i said started out this interview the support group that's around um you know they get a wife and kids and they understand well at least the two and a half year old understands like what i'm doing now it gets really excited for it cool. um and it, it is it's uh it's great to have around and uh it's just it's really exciting and tell me obviously your, your younger brother your, your brother mark had a great high school career and ran for a little while at sms and tell me what it was like watching your sister uh, marley earn all american status in cross country last year in spokane tell me what that's been like to step away instead of being the athlete, being the fan, the big brother. Yeah, it was uh, last year, and uh, well, it would have been 2011. Yeah. Um, cross. Uh, it was awesome that it was up in the northwest, and um, they had terrible conditions, which could be they're calling for snow tonight. Could be somewhat similar right. to what it's out there tomorrow, but um, yeah, she just ran a great solid race and um it's just been a lot of fun seeing her progress and uh, especially going out of high school and kind of trying to figure out what she really wanted at the next level like did she want to go d1 or go d2 and um you know she chose perfect school for her mm -hmm. she's very happy there um start off career with a, a third place team trophy and yeah and then all, yeah. all american yeah. and i think now she's kind of the the older one um, on the team and she's got uh, kind of uh, reloading that program and she had a great experience her freshman year and I think now she's showing uh, the younger group what, what it takes to get there right. um, to get back to that level and um, it's it is it's I get a lot of enjoyment out of it I'm glad that she really enjoys the sport and um, she makes the most out of what she's got for yeah. sure um, and so that the four-year cycle, um, you know, of London is over. What kind of starts new? What are you? Are you, are you first cross country race in probably how long? So, well, actually, I did U.S. Championships. Uh, it must have been '09. Okay. Um, and, or it could have been '10. It was in when it was in San Diego. Yeah. Um, it would have been '10, and yeah. that was just to. And I had a really rough winter, um, and um, it was one of those, like, the season was coming up fast, and I wasn't ready for a real hard track race, but I could get in a competitive situation being in cross. Um, and this is definitely more than that. Um, yeah. There's definitely an element of kind of that home turf feel. Sure. Um, but also, I think I've just really... I got the the junior cross title and I got a, a national title in all the other disciplines right now, except for a senior men's title in right. cross country. So um, it will be a very challenging race tomorrow. Uh, Dathan always makes you earn 
whatever you're going to get. Um, and with those young guys in there as well, it's going to be an exciting race for the fans, but a stressful, nervous race for the athletes. Sure. Um, what Do you have any intentions of going on the Worlds, or is this just kind of a... It'll definitely have to be something that uh, Jerry and I discuss. Yeah. Um, right now, um, it's it's definitely kind of a 50-50. Yeah. Um, I think it'll kind of depend on who else was going to go on the team as sure. well. Sure. Uh, but again, we got to kind of sit back and it's always, it's always tough. Um, that time of year when they host Worlds is right. a very important build-up, getting ready for the very important outdoor season. Right. Um, and I think all systems have to be 100% if you're going to commit to that. So, Is, it, is it frustrating as, as a professional that basically the money is, is on the track it's, it's, and there's not a whole lot of incentive to keep running cross-country after, after, after college? Do you, do you, I mean... As a fan, I know, yeah. man, it'd be great if we could have all the top American men to, you know, get in there and mix it up and try to go yeah. to the Worlds like yeah. the women did two years ago and earn a trophy yeah. or a medal. Well, but I think when you saw kind of the downturn um, or the less participation from uh, a lot of teams was when the 4K went away. Yeah. 12K is a long, very long grind on the body, yeah. um, and usually very tough conditions. Yeah. Um, and I think it's something that, you know, maybe if the races were a little bit shorter in that eight to ten k range, sure. it should actually end up even bringing more competition because more people from different disciplines would be able, would to. Be able to do it. Um, and maybe that might um, spur some sure. more interest, um, but also. Uh, in the U.S. from that, you know, I think the one thing, um, talking about my career earlier, uh, one of the things lacking for me, like I never got to compete in a major championship on U.S. soil, yeah. ever. And that brings, it really legitimately would bring, being over and seeing the other, um, you know, the home team, so to speak, and the the boost that they got sure. just from being in front of a home crowd, yeah. uh, that would be awesome. And I think that could kind of re-energize a little bit of the U.S. base as well. Right. Maybe you maybe should put a call into Madison and see if they can make a yeah. bid to I, host the next World up there. I don't know if there. we would want to be in Madison in February or March. Right. <laughs> Much less November, at the end of November yeah. for Nationals. Yeah. But, um, um, to finish up, what... Um, for for young young athletes that are you know experiencing this running um, you know for the first time and um, you know what are your suggestions? I know you got involved as um, in in uh, as you know as a young guy just constantly progress and progress. But what what would you what do you say to you know what any suggestions for young athletes that are just kind of involved in the sport and and love it, enjoy it, and any, any advice for, for high schoolers or middle schoolers? Yeah, you know, I think the best part for me and the thing that kept me, that's always kept me really into the, the uh, sport focused is the people around me. Um, whether it's been at a high school level, collegiate level, or lucky for me, a uh, post-collegiate level, I've always had people that were um, keeping me honest. Sure. around and like through training and practice there was just the camaraderie that was formed our friendships that you know will are everlasting yeah. honestly and um, it's I think that's once you kind of submerge yourself in and get a year or two in the the running the competition side um, it becomes contagious and it's something that's really uh, exciting and something you look forward to and uh, that uh, going to the start line and what you think are the butterflies in your stomach it's probably the one thing I'm going to miss the most when I'm done right. um, and I've throughout my career I've learned to view those as not a negative but it's, sure. it's definitely a positive like it's something that really there's a uh, 
the only thing that you're nervous about is the unknown or uh, the anticipation side of it. But it's not because I'm unprepared or, you know, I'm like, I shouldn't be in this race right. or anything like that. And so, um, you know, I've learned to harness that and utilize that within the race. Um, but yeah, like you just, the sport is, it's great. Um, and I think as long as, you know, I think a lot of coaches now, even at the high school level, are starting to learn more and more about a, a kind sure. of a defined training plan from season to season. And I think it's just really important for um, all athletes to listen to their coaches, come up with a plan before the year starts, yeah. and stick with that plan throughout the year. Um, things may not always go smooth, but they'll always get better um, if you stick to that plan and have confidence in it. Um, and um, I think the, it's really important for the senior class to pass on as much information to the freshmen as possible mm -hmm. and for the freshmen to take that and really harness it and create that tradition. Right. Um, that's what gets more and more kids out, shows that the it's you know a really fun sport. And then after that, like when you're moving into college, you're when you're choosing a college, if you're fortunate enough to, to go on and run, you wanna try to pick a program that's gonna be similar to what you just came from. Um, running, you gotta put in a lot of time into this sport to keep getting better and better and you want something that's just going to track smoothly throughout all those years. Um, what, tell me, let me, sorry, just another minute or two, but tell me what you remember about running in high school. Before you do that, let me remember, tell you what I remember about Matt T. <laughs> uh, I remember a short, skinny, you know, redhead kid, you know, helping his Lee Summit Coach Denny's team, you know, steal my state cross country <laughs> championship title away as we were, Jeff said he were trying to go for two in a row and, oh, we're going to try to break that record and it didn't turn out that way and um, and then I think, you know, you tumbling down that hill and recovering to finish eighth <laughs> or whatever uh, and then later that spring as a sophomore uh, at the Lee Summit meet, coming across and finishing 16 and, and breaking 440 and being super excited about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, four, three, four, you know, and actually that's pretty good for a sophomore. But, um, but then the state meet as a senior, you know, going 857 and, you know, 411 or 12, 13, whatever. Man, this guy's going to be one of the best 5K10 guys in the U.S., you know, in a few years. And you know, I guess I probably thought you were going to be good, but probably not that you were going to be just miss a world championships medal and, you know, go sub 13 and you know 350 something mile but tell me what you just thoughts and memories of, of your time at least summit and running in high school yeah um for me the two biggest i mean one i think was that state title um and we were in your shoes the very next year trying to defend it as well right. and did not end up doing it so um but it was uh, sophomore, I mean, it was completely unexpected for us, and I think it shows the the beauty of the sport is every single person on that team rose to the occasion yeah. and probably max. I mean, literally maximized their performance on that day, and it was just really cool to be part of. Our coach had no idea, like where you know he knew what was happening. But he didn't really understand anything until, you know, I just remember him, all those scores being posted up on the clubhouse and him running down the hill. And you could just tell, like, he knew what we had done. And, right. um, and it, was, uh, it was just a great team atmosphere. And I think that at the time, it took our team to another level. Yeah. Um, and not only in cross country, but that spread to the track and field team sure. as well. Um, and then senior year um, that we won state as a team of track um, and well going back to cross country that senior year for me like I was on a mission in cross because the year before my junior year I attempted the same type of race going out you know just making it if anybody wanted to stay with me they were gonna have to commit super early and yeah um, you know that fire station hill 
crushed me in my junior year. I ended up fourth. Three people passed, passed me in the, the final hill. Um, but uh, senior year. Well, I think you were so distraught that they were getting ready for the picture. And where, where's the fourth place guy? And I, I think I ran down and said, hey, they're waiting. And you were just like, yeah, you were just I was <laughs> not pleased at all. Um, like I said, I'm a super competitive person. So, um, but yeah, from that point, I think that was a, a lesson learned. I think sure. I learned, um, you know, if you're going to commit to something like that, you better have all your ducks in a row and be very well prepared. Um, it kind of raised, you know, that was a very negative situation, but it definitely, I learned from it. Uh, my high school coach learned from it, and it really prepared me for the next season and a half. And from that point on, there was no looking back. Um, I think I got, you know, the, I'll never forget, like, um, in the paper my senior year for cross country, uh, the local newspaper, they had a bar graph showing the closest finish mm -hmm. to me in all my cross country races. Yeah. Um, that's probably, that's still like on my parents' wall. That's probably the coolest, <laughs> you know, memory from, or memorabilia from high school. Right. Um, and then I'll never forget the, the way things played out at the state meet. Um, with thunderstorms like early in the day it moved the races tonight track, yeah. it's everybody's dream to be racing under the lights it just creates that much better of an atmosphere yeah. um, that 3200 you know, it was just like we had in my dream you know like every I knew exactly 67 67 67 67 Jason and Sanford just right like yeah and, and, and just kept grinding away and grinding away and I knew exactly what I had to do and um, the the atmosphere in the crowd, I think that's probably the only first and only time they've gotten into a distance race. But going after that record, the people in the stands understood that um, they got extremely excited, and um, you know that was for a high school race. That was the loudest race I'd ever been at for a high school race at that point. So um, there's just a lot of special moments going on, winning the state title and track. You know, being a part of that. Um, I think it just really early on, like all of those experiences and successes really set me up to really... Footlocker, footlocker cross your senior year. You know, that becomes an individual thing. Yeah. Um, at high school, you, you can have... Surely that opened your eyes up to... Yeah, it look. definitely... I think that put me in a position for, you know, coaches to pay attention to Missouri. Sure. A little bit. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, that was... When you can place place well at those national events, um, that's it put me in a great position to move on to a program, uh, University of Wisconsin, that's never missed nationals. Yeah. And like having that walking into that sort of tradition as an 18 year old, and then having a coach that at the time nobody really knew, but you know was one of the the next greats. Um, in the you know it's just I've been very fortunate throughout my entire career and Dave Denny being my high school coach coaching Joe Falcon in high school coaching a 349 miler um, you know out of college post collegiately um, the teams that I've had around me going into Wisconsin like it's just been one of those things that uh, I always reference the book Outliers um, and that's kind of the situation like you I got a lot of talent, but I've been very lucky being placed in certain sure. situations. Although you're probably the only change would probably be your your wife's college choice, right? Going yeah. To <laughs> yeah. But that uh, would, yeah, that would have made things a little easier. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, um, and then tell me what you remember. I mean, it's neat having you and Dathan here racing this year this weekend because I mean, you guys yeah. had two of the best junior finishes ever. What third and fifth and. Third and fifth. and Houston, in Belgium. In, what, 2001? 2001. Yep. Tell me what you remember about that and how, I mean, that kind of really exploded the whole, this whole young culture of, who we, U.S. distance yeah. runs back in the U.S. Yeah, I don't think neither him or I really knew what the heck we were doing um, in that race. The only thing we knew is, you know, like, him and I were, I think we were teeing off of each other. Yeah. You know, we were just, I mean, we're really competitive athletes and, um, we just we got out. We, I think it was a pretty fortunate race for us. 
when you got out in that type of uh, race where watery mud or sticky mud that you know it was up to here, you know, up to your middle of your calf. Yeah. Um, it was. Uh, you get out and you pretty much, as long as you could maintain the effort, you pretty much didn't move a whole lot of spots. And um, I think it, for me, for sure, that was kind of the light bulb went off. Like there could be life, a post-collegiate career, going, you know, driving for the Olympics, that sort of thing. That was the, the first experience for me was that 2001 Worlds. Yeah. And is this the, the first race besides a turkey trot or, or something back on for Thanksgiving, first competitive race in Missouri. I know you've been back to KU Relays. Yeah. But is this the first? This is the first time on Missouri soil since uh, State Meet uh, Senior State, Year. Yeah. Okay. For track, yeah. yeah. So, well, yeah, well, well, sure appreciate the time, and uh, it's just been fun to watch, and um, good luck tomorrow. And uh, hopefully it'll be warmer than what it was last year. Was yeah, miserable. if we can get it above 30, I think we'll be all right. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. What's the plans for tomorrow? It's a little race to the afternoon? Do you just relax? And yeah, we'll kind of see. I mean, the weather's been a little bit unpredictable. Um, you know, looking from a ways out, it looked very promising. Um, and now we've had kind of these ups and downs with cold spells and a little bit of snow. And will it thaw out tomorrow and make it muddy? Is it going to be windy um, as they're kind of projecting? Um I think just the way the course is itself already slants to being a pretty slow, grinded out effort. Sure. Um, if there's any worse weather conditions, I think that's going to just reinforce that. So yeah. it's going to be, it's going to have to be a very patient race. And obviously, I think they'll be, you know, testing early on to see what people really got. Uh, be frustrated with those young guys who like. To Hey, I'm gonna get my picture at the front of the pack in the race. <laughs> no, they can they can go for it. Um, you know, I think I've got. I'm very comfortable in the way that I race. Um, you know, even in the the 20k that I ran on the roads, you know, I'd let uh, Luke get a solid half mile out away probably, and it took me a long time to reel him in. But you know, I I went for him and got him and. Um, I got no no problem being extremely patient, and I know I know for myself I pick a point in the race where like, okay, that was all just kind of the pre-race. Like yeah. now it starts, right. and uh, when that time comes, you know I'll do what I need to do to to maximize my finish. Right. Well, obviously, Coach Denny is one of you know great all-time Missouri coaches, and what. And finish up what any, any thoughts on him and are any funny stories I mean he's just so dedicated to so much time and energy to yeah and people and runners and no he's been uh, him and I you know not as much contact but we are still in contact together and um, you know create like he will travel uh, he came to Berlin world championships um, didn't decide until probably like you know, two weeks out that, like, he was actually going to do it. Right. And then, like, uh, probably got a... He always just kind of lets me go about my thing. Like, he wants to be there and be in the, um, the atmosphere and um, be a part of it, but he never bothers me. Like, sure. I have to, like, track him down right. to, to just kind of catch up for a little bit. And, uh, it was the same way this year at the Olympic trials. He was there in 08 as well. Uh, but this year at the, at the Olympic trials, it was, like... He had already had plans for the day after my 10,000, but he still flew out the morning of, drove down to Eugene, watched my race, and then flew out of Portland that night. Oh and so, um, you know, it's a, been a really special relationship. Um, you know, he kind of was the first mentor for me, um, showing me kind of the path and how to, you know, keep my head down grinding away and what it was going to take to get to you know at the time the collegiate level sure. but he really instilled those traits that have taken me up to the the professional level and you know he's been like I said he's been he got to travel the professional circuit um with Joe Falcon and yeah. um he just he knew what it took and um I didn't always listen to him in high school <laughs> but uh definitely listened to him enough to to, to do what I needed to do yeah. and 
get to the next level. So, any favorite characteristic or story, funny story that you can share about him? Uh, that comes to mind, really. No, I mean, he's just so laid back. I mean, nothing. There are very few times is anything ever. I think that was kind of the one. Jerry definitely has this um, as well, but they know before the season starts where they want to be at the end of the year. Um, and they've, they've got a path to get there. Yeah. And they can hear, you know, stuff might be going extremely crappy for the athletes through the first half of the year. And they just, patience, like, will get there. Right. And they're just very calm, cool, collected. And um, he's always been that way. And we were always primed to run our best in the championship part of the season. Right. Um, and I think that's helped me immensely as the years have gone on because you've got to have these you know rough patches and real it's when you put your real hard specific training in and sure. things aren't always going to go well but they will take you to the promised land right. uh, down the road yeah and um well um, just one blank can't think of what i was going to say but Oh, who's who's your who's joined your training group? I know it's been you and Chris and uh, oh man, um, but and I think you've had what three or four additions. Yeah, recently? so looking at the we got uh, Wisconsin guys: Chris Solinsky, Simon Byru, Tim Nelson, myself, and then we've had Brent Vaughn, um, Evan Jager, who's a Wisconsin guy. You'd be mad if I didn't say that. Uh, Lopez Lamont, um, Alan Webb, Chris Derrick, Elliot Heath, um, German Fernandez. Um, and is Luke and still in Eugene with the OTC there group? Or? He's still in college. I don't like. He's finishing up classes. I don't oh, okay. know if he is, but he's not. He's finished. Part of our, yeah, yeah, part of our group. Okay. Um, I know. I'm forgetting. Some guys, Dan Hewling okay. has joined. Um, actually, I think that is everybody that I named okay. But it is it is pretty amazing when we line up for our hard, long sessions and just see the guys that you're around. Right. I mean, it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, And that's what, we are not the end-all be-all by any sure. means. Uh, the more of those types of groups that are out there, but it's, I mean, that's what's really helped American Distance Running is getting that collection of talent together and being willing to help each other out in training and still, you know, being able to put your ego aside and not that you're not competitive and don't want to go for the win, but just realizing on that day, everybody's got to do what's best for them. Sure. Um, and it's it's been a great uh, journey and an exciting journey. and. Something I'm glad I've been a part of. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, what happened with uh, John Dalby didn't get his team up there to Portland so you could see for Nike Cross. No, this year. but he did. He they uh, pulled off within, that state title in Colorado. Yeah, within though. five years. Yeah. He started a Impressive. program from scratch and got a state title. And the the way they've got things moving up there is extremely impressive. I've been lucky enough to. We do some altitude training there in Colorado, so I've gotten to stop by, cool. and they've got well over 100 kids out at the high school level, yeah. and well over 100 kids out for the middle school program. Yeah, that's amazing. And he just makes the sport really fun and exciting, and um, they've got moving, transferring to track. He has taken over the head coaching duties and got a great coaching staff, and people that have had um, success either at the collegiate level or the professional level as coaches. And um, there'll be probably big things coming from that program. And yeah. um, it's, it's fun to, to see what he's done in a short amount of time. Yeah. If it's windy tomorrow, are you going to duck behind Luke and maybe Chris Derrick a little bit <laughs> and avoid that wind? Or? I'm sure that uh, it will, if, if that's the case, um, it'll be a tactical race for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, thanks again for the time, and uh, good luck. We'll be enjoy watching tomorrow. Yeah, thank you very much.